This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hey there, hello there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy, and this birthday boy is April the 16th. Now you may be thinking, well, if you're a football fan, you know that it's Bill Belichick's birthday. I actually didn't know that, even though you know I'm a Patriots fan. But with the fact that I could have done Belichick, but the fact that I did Tony Dorsett April 7th made me thinking, wait a minute, that was nine days ago. However, there's one major sport I didn't do. I've done a hockey player, I've done a football player, I've done a baseball player, but I haven't done a basketball player on, for birthdays in April. So, guess what? I'm going to have to make one for a basketball player. So, he wins out. And besides, he's regarded as one of the greatest, if not the greatest NBA of all time. I know everyone says, well, what about Michael Jordan or LeBron James or even Will the still Chamberlain. But yeah, this guy is huge. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I mean, this guy was a freaking legend in university, in college ball. So anyway, Abdul Jabbar played 20 years in the NBA for both Milwaukee and LA. And a lot of people are like, wait a minute, he was a he was a Milwaukee Buck? Yes, he was. Anyway, six time MVP. That's a record that MJ doesn't even have. Nineteen time All Star. He only missed one All Star game in his appearance. Wow. 15-time All-NBA selection, and 11-time All-Defensive Team member. Well, he's a center, fuck. He's seven foot two. he's 74 years old today. He was born in 1947, the day after Jackie Robinson's debut in the NBA. I mean, the MLB. Fuck me. Anyway, yeah. Elsind, well, his name is actually Lou Elsindor Jr. But anyway, Elsindor was recruited by the assistant coach of UCLA to play for the Bruins. Instead of staying on the East Coast, even though that he won a lot of games for his high school team in New York City. He played for John Wooden, who is basically one of the best college basketball coaches of all time. And how long did Wooden last? Was he 96 when he died? i got to remember how old John Wooden was. John Wooden was 99 when he died, and that was in 2010. Like, holy bananas. He was almost 100 years old when he died. Anyway... So yeah, he was at, he was he played for UCLA, and he was picked first overall by the Milwaukee Bucks, who are get, who were getting into their second year in the NBA in the '69 NBA draft. Alexander spent six years with Milwaukee, got them to a title, and then he became and then he took a Muslim name, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. He was known for his sky hook, and then he was traded to Los Angeles, where he played the final 14 years of his career and won five straight, won five titles. He only missed two playoffs in his 20-year NBA career, which is pretty good. He's When he retired at age 42, he was the all-time leader in points, games, minutes played, field goals made, field goal attempts, block shots, defensive rebounds, wins, and personal fouls. He's still the leader in points, field goals made, and career wins, which is pretty good. He's third in rebound and block, rebounds and block shots. That's pretty good. Named the greatest center of all time in 2007, the greatest player in college history in 2008, and the second best player in NBA history, he's been said, behind MJ in 2016. Fuck off. Abdul Jabbar actually was in a few motion pictures. One was Game of Death, famous for Bruce Lee's last picture before he somehow died of an edema. Not an edema, edema, E D E M A. And Abdul Jabbar was actually a co pilot in the the spoof film Airplane in 1980. It was amazing. All that. I see him there. He has the Prince National Medal of Freedom. So anyway, he helped New York City do well as a basketball high school team. And then he decided to go to UCLA. In fact, he's only one of four players ever to star on three NCAA championship winning teams. Henry Bibby, Curtis Rowe, and Lynn Shackelford were there. Now, Azender didn't play at UCLA in his freshman campaign because freshmen under the NCAA thing were ineligible to play until 1972, which was kind of stupid. In fact, there was a story that Abdul Jabari and the freshman team took on the varsity team and beat the varsity team. But anyway, he was amazing. He was seven foot one. And national coverage. Sports Illustrated called him the new superstar. 
that that it was a jinx from Sports Illustrated, the famous jinx. However, he proved them all wrong. He was 88 and 2 in college. Elsinder had an eye injury, which was in that famous one for number one versus number two matchup against the University of Houston when they played at the Astrodome, where like 50,000 people were there. And UCLA lost to USC in another game. But USC played a stall game. There was no shot clock in those days. Until 1986, that was. Elsinder was amazing for the 67, 68, and 69 UCLA champions. There were rumors that El Cinder actually was going to transfer to Michigan because of unfulfilled recruiting promises. However, they calmed him down enough. After the 67 season, El Cinder's famous dunks were banned. The dunk was banned in college basketball until 1976, which was amazing. It was like, for nine years, you couldn't dunk in a college basketball game. The, the shot wouldn't count, and you get a technical foul, I think. So, anyway. Yes, Elzinder had the cornea problem and all that. He earned a Bachelor of Arts from UCLA with a major in history in 1969, which is pretty good. Yeah, the scratched cornea was why he wore goggles for eye protection, because he had his cornea scratched a couple times as a pro. Anyway, yeah, he played the game of the century against Houston. However, UCLA crushed Houston in the semifinals of the 1968 championship because Elsendor didn't really have any eye injuries and all that. Alcindor was Catholic and now became a Sunni Islam member and got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He boycotted the 68th Summer Olympics for political reasons, which wasn't a bad idea. I mean, U.S. still won the gold. He denied being part of the radical nation of Islam, but Sports Illustrated said that he may have something to do with it. But anyway, so... Abdul Jabbar won three national titles. And then Milwaukee had the number one pick in the 1969 draft. Now in those days, the two teams were two teams the team in the conference with the worst mark in the conference would flip a coin. Phoenix and Houston. No, Phoenix and Milwaukee. Milwaukee won the coin flip, so they got the number one pick, and it was Will Sundor. The New York Nets made the number one pick in the ABA draft. And they thought that they could secure Elsinder services because he's from New York. Elsinder told both Milwaukee and New Jersey, to, well, the New York Nets, to to pick to do an offer, one offer from each team. The Nets lost out because Milwaukee's offer was better. Alcindor gave the Bucks offer $1.4 million, which is pretty good in those days. Now, Phoenix would not come out roses in the, with the second pick. It was Neil Walk, who basically was a bust. So, Alcindor's presence helped the 1970 Bucks do well. They took second in the NBA's Eastern Division. They were 27 wins in their first year, then they doubled, more than doubled that to 56. He was Rookie of the Year, no doubt. It was amazing. In fact, Alcindor was the only rookie to record 10 or more games of 20-plus points in the playoffs until Jason Tatum in 2018. The Bucks got Oscar Robertson, and basically Milwaukee went kind of all in trying to be the best team ever. They won 66 games in the 70-71 season, 66 wins, 16 losses, 20 straight wins, which was the NBA record until the Lakers obliviated that the next year, 32. 
El Cerdor was given his first MVP trophy and his first scoring title. The Bucks were 12 and 2 in the playoffs, including a sweep of the Baltimore Bullets, not the Washington Bullets, the Baltimore Bullets, the Bullets franchise, well, Bullets slash Wizards, if you will. So El Cerdor was named Finals MVP. Well, duh. So Abdul Jabbar was dominant for Milwaukee. He helped the he was the scoring champion again. Oh that. So in 1975, Abdul Jabbar finally decided to wear goggles for the rest of his career when he when he played in, in a game. However, Abdul Jabbar said that he didn't feel like his cultural needs were met being in the Midwest. So he demanded to be traded back to New York or to Los Angeles. Well, the Lakers hit the bullet and acquired him and a reserve center from the Milwaukee Bucks for Elmore Smith, Brian Winters, and rookies Dave Myers and Junior Bridgman. Dave Myers would be kind of the partial replacement for Kareem after he left school. So Dave Myers was from UCLA. Junior Bridgman, I can't remember what school he went to, but anyway, he was a decent player. So Milwaukee actually came out on top because Junior Bridgman helped the Bucks out pretty well. And Elmore Smith, nah, not really. But anyway, he was a dominant player for the Lakers and all that. He won three MVPs in Milwaukee and three in L.A., which is pretty good. But he won his fourth MVP thing. But unfortunately, once again, he missed the full season. That 35-76 season was the last time Abdul Jabbar played in a season for 13 years without, without making the playoffs. So anyway, he looked good for the Lakers. The Lakers were going to the Western Finals against Portland in the 77 season. But sadly, though, Abdul-Jabbar lost to his his successor at UCLA, being at center, Bill Walton. It was weird. In 1978, he actually got mad at Milwaukee Bucks player Ken Benson, former Indiana star, in retaliation for elbow. The punch broke right into his jaw and Abdul Jabbar's hand. Abdul Jabbar went out, was out for two months with his injury, and the league didn't suspend him, which was weird. And he would miss the 78 NBA All-Star game, which was the only time he missed the All-Star game during his career. The Lakers had troubles in the playoffs, but thankfully they got the number one pick in the 79 draft, thanks to some keen trades and all that. So they got Magic Johnson in the 79 NBA draft. It was huge because it helped the Lakers get to eight finals in the 1980s and five NBA titles. He was huge. He was su a superstar. All that. In 1983, his house burned down and a lot of his belongings, including his jazz collection of 3,000 albums, were destroyed. However, Laker fans sent and bought him albums, and he was happy. Abdul Jabbar retired at age 42, June of 1989. Sadly, though, in a loss in the NBA Finals to the Detroit Pistons, he would get standing ovations at all games, home and away, and given gifts like a yacht. To frame jerseys from his character, Afghan rug, and all that. There was a farewell game. Every player, wore, every Celtic and Laker legend wore um, Abdul Jabbar's tournament goggles. I would have loved to see that. But anyway, yeah. The Lakers made the enemy finals in each of Abdul Jabbar's final three seasons. He won 87, but lost to Detroit both in 88 and 89. So, yeah, he had a lot of influence and all that. He didn't really like talking to the press and all that. He was actually an assistant for the Clippers and Sonics, which is decent. He was a scout for the Knicks. He was a special assistant coach to Phil Jackson for six years as a Laker and would mentor Andrew Bynum. He was great with his sky hook and all that, which is weird for the fact that Sarah would shoot a shot, uh, sky hook like that. 
the Arctic. 1987 was his famous sky hook to sink the Celtics in Game 5 for the NBA Finals. So yeah, he was amazing and all that. The guy played 1,560 games in his career. He would actually start, well, he started a lot of them. He averaged 24.6 points a game, 11.2 rebounds a game. In the playoffs, 24.3 points a game and 10.5 rebounds a game in 237 postseason games. He got to the Hall of Fame, two-time Associated Press College Basketball Player of the Year award, three-time NBA champion in the NBA, Rookie of the Year, 1976-time NBA champion, and NBA MVP six times. Finals MVP only twice, 71 to 85, only twice. And the first player in NBA history that played 20 seasons, which is amazing. So yeah, he was in Game of Death, he was in Airplane and all that. So anyway, the little boy tells Abdul Jabbar in Airplane that he's the greatest, but according to his dad, he doesn't work hard on defense and never tries, except during the playoffs. And Abdul Jabbar's character says, the hell I don't. I've heard that crap ever since I left UCLA. And he busts his buns every night and says, tell your old man to drag Bill Walton and Bill Bob Lanier up and down the court for 48 minutes. Yeah, this was amazing. He was on In Living Color. Don't remember seeing that episode. Abdul Jabbar was even in a Big Bang Fury episode, The Dungeons and Dragons Vortex. Wow. Yeah, this was amazing. You know, that part of the documentary, activism for both black and Muslim community. Abdul Jabbar met Habiba Abdul Jabbar, aka Janice Brown, at a Lakers game during his senior year at UCLA. They married and had three children. Two daughters, Habiba and Sultana, and son Kareem Jr., who played for Western Kentucky and Felpo. Wow. After the divorce, he actually has had two sons with Sheriff Pastano. Amir and Adam. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was also in a major thing with Miami Dolphins running back who used to play at UCLA named Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but Kareem was spelled K-R-I-M because he felt that Abdul-Jabbar, the Miami running back, was profiting off the name he was made famous and wore number 32 on his Dolphins jersey. As a result, the Younger Abdul Jabbar changed his jersey nameplate to Abdul when he played for the Dolphins. He's actually called Abdul Kareem Al Jabbar now. Abdul Jabbar suffered from a form of leukemia, but it passed out in 2009. Um, 2011, he was made cancer free, which is pretty good. So yeah, so Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was a freaking icon, and don't you forget it. He was the glue that stuck a lot of teams and a lot of NBA careers together, including Michael Jordan's, but what do I know? Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.